Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the law of God and the cup of abominations. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw women sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was rayed, and purple, and scarlet color, and decked with gold, and precious stone, and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations, and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So guys, um, in previous lessons, we've been discussing at length um, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, the beast, his image, the dragon, and the harlot. And this is uh, an amazing passage of scripture that is just terrible. It's I think it's the darkest, most uh, uh, terrifying um, prophetic view that, that we've been given in all of, of sacred scripture. Um, that depicts the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. It's, it's an amazing, it has a humongous amount of information on it. I've written three and a half pages on it and I still, there's more, there's, there's a lot more. And uh, so it comes through the Spirit. We have to wait on the Holy Spirit to um, um, enlighten us and lead us. And so um, uh, that's what I'm doing. As I get enlightenment from the Holy Spirit, uh, from the Holy Spirit, um, I make notes and then um, I, I relay this to you guys. I get up here on YouTube and I, I edify you guys with what I understand and what I believe to be as truth. So we've also been discussing the spirit of Antichrist that appears in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18, which I personally believe appears to me to be the deepest roots of Antichrist. And this actually goes all the way back to the to the time of the apostles. And we have John here depicting the the uh, uh, the the that the spirit of Antichrist, stating that the spirit of Antichrist was actually in operation within his time, and we understood that we understand that to be um, um, anti-Christ. It to be it's 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 um, um uh, it's the the uh, it's the the fraud. And to, to commit fraud with what is true and to turn what is true into a fault and to false, right? And the the to be anointed with the spirit of Antichrist is to be to not to be cognizant of what is true. This is depicted as Babylonian captivity in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. So 1 John 2, 15 through 18, I personally believe is the deepest roots of Antichrist. But during this time during this time of uh, uh, in the the first century AD we haven't we hadn't even had the first incarnation of the beast yet remember we've been discussing the first and second incarnation of the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 through 10 we have the first beast appear and then Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 through 18 we have the second beast appear and in the first incarnation of the beast we don't have the image to the beast the image to the beast does not appear as far as I know in sacred scripture, until the second incarnation of the beast. And we know the first incarnation of the beast was from 538 to 1798 in direct correspondence to the 1,260-year prophecy that appears not only in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, but it also appears in Revelation chapter 12 and a few other places also. So, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, while, why, while the spirit of Antichrist was in operation, it was laboring. Satan was laboring to spoil Christian doctrines. He was laboring to, to contaminate truth with error. And that's it. we understand that to be Satan's greatest tactical advantage over men is to, to have people drink in of the Lord 
with what has been contaminated with because people will not drink poison unless it's disguised as lemonade. So this is the Satan knows this. People will not accept what is not true unless it they won't accept, excuse me, they yeah, right. They won't accept falsehood unless it's cloaked with what is true. And he uh, this is his greatest tactical as far as as a militant advantage over the consciousness of human beings is to to conceal what is fraud with what is truth and then have people ingest it have it, people ingest a combination of 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 a a, a a cloak of righteousness that's really just concealing the the presence of death within and that's actually this is actually the very the very manifestation and working of antichrist into our world which is what antichrist is laboring to do today which is to appear within the tabernacle of man it's a cloak of righteousness that's 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 uh, it's actually the temple of God. This is what Antichrist is doing, and then this is what Antichrist, what Paul is stating Antichrist is doing, um, not only in two Corinthians chapter eleven verse thirteen through fifteen, where he depicts Satan as an angel of light and his ministers as false ministers of righteousness, but he's also depicting this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, and 8 through 12, where he says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And people without cognizance of God's indwelt presence People are not cognizant of sin and the presence of death within their environment. And Satan knows this. They're not cognizant. Without truth, men cannot discern what is in the light. Only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. And thus we have Satan labors to crown himself in the kingdoms of men by first seating himself in the heart in the hearts of all flesh so men are not cognizant that he is present in the temple of God before them. So we have 1 John 2, 15 through 18. We have the spirit of Antichrist, which was actually working within John's day, but it had not, it had not appeared within the ministry of the church of Satan that has appeared today as manifest by the image to the beast, which is the corporeal body, the administrator, the mediator, and the minister of of Satan that brings the spirit of Antichrist and captures the entire world on pain of death and causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17 which is the seal of Satan within the constitution of man. So 1 John 2 15 through 18 we have the 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 the, the very deepest roots of the spirit of Antichrist as it was laboring to capture people in John's day. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the, doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. 1 Timothy 6.10, we have the love of money is the root of all evil. When you, we put these two together, 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is the root of all it. It roots and grounds people. It covers the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life. And so these two passages to get together give us the, the, the deepest roots of the spirit of Antichrist before Satan actually uh, began, began his ministry through the appearing of the image to the beast, which is the church of Satan that resides within our world today as we're all co painfully cognizant that the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and soliciting the worship of death, both passively and directly within the United States of America today. And of course, one it's John chapter 8, verse 44, you are your father, devil, unless your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and bowed not a truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh of his lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father. When we have here we have the the declaration by Holy Father God that people that do that continue in these lusts and as the image of the beast has we know it sold it sold to Satan um, for sexual and monetary control over the world on pain of death as manifested by the the harlot arrayed in gold 
precious stone and pearls that's that has taken her seat in power by the manifestation of the beast and his image the appearing of the beast and his image in our world and we know that the 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 wages the 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 leading away of all flesh is by the lust of the flesh. One John two fifteen to eighteen, the spirit of Antichrist depicts this also, just as John chapter eight verse forty four depicts also. And as men become more and more captivated by satanic power, eventually they they will. God declares here in John chapter eight verse forty four, and as in conjunction with with the spirit of Antichrist, it's revealed in one John two fifteen through eighteen, one Timothy six ten. Men eventually will commit murders to satiate their own satanic desires, and this is actually this is repeated. This I haven't I didn't write this down, but this is actually James mentions this in James chapter four. He says, from, him, from whence come wars and fightings among you, come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and ye receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. So James declared, declares this here in James chapter 4, verse 1 through Three is is what I and then he says in verse four, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Here's a direct reference to satanic captivity with the spirit of Antichrist and the mark of the beast. To me, this apparent this James chapter four here again, this points right to the mark of the beast as it is manifestly declared and and people are captivated for eternity while residing in suspended animation as dead souls. To me, this James here points to this, and this ain't Paul, and this ain't Isaiah, and this ain't Jeremiah. This is James. Okay, here's another reference. Here's another reference to me that points directly to the final captivity of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. James is referencing this right here as people that are being led away, and they're actually, as John chapter 8, verse 44 depicts, people, men, once they become organized, when it becomes organized crime, and especially as manifested by the image of the beast, they'll kill people to satiate their own satanic desires. And as God allows men by his judgments to organize in satanic power as they organize and incorporate with the seal of Satan residing within their hearts, this is the manifestation of the final harv the, of the, the final movement of the ministry of Satan within our world. So um, John chapter 8 verse 44 though, gives us the 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 wages it gives us the 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 payments that men we know that that men that are inspired satanically will not work without being paid natural man receives wages he receives money for his wages wages but there's there's nothing wrong with that he receives money for his wages and he loves his family members and he takes care of his family but the wages with Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist are, the, the Bible makes it very clear, are the lusts of flesh, the lusts of eyes, and the pride of life. We know Satanists will not work without being paid, period. They will not, they will not. Satan's, Satan's entire incorporation of the worship of death is based on the lie that people are going to advance by his power, which is ultimately the 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 right the 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 manifestation of killing people that are in opposition of righteousness to them, silencing all opposition of righteousness on pain of death. Okay, so uh, this it's the 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 and that in and of itself, this movement in and of itself perpetuates the lie because anybody that is righteous and attempts to stand up and say, no, this is false and you're leading people into captivity, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, where the word of God says, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. 
So we know that the for for people that are inspired satanically with the spirit of Antichrist are laboring and they're laboring in the manifestation of the ministry of the image to the beast, which we know the image of the beast sold its soul for sexual and monetary control over the world. And as the seal of Satan appears, it, this appears, excuse me, this appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse three and four, where the woman has seated in her power by the manifestation of the, the ministry of the image of the beast within the nations. And in Re Revelation chapters 13, verse 15 through 17, we have the final conclusion of this ministry of Satan, which is declared, the true nature of this movement is declared when she declares the right to kill all opposition of righteousness to silence people that are, are voicing um, um, the truth and lead, trying to lead people out of this captivity. So uh, the spirit of Antichrist is, 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 is not the same as it was. It's not as innocent as, so to speak, it's not a child anymore. 1 John 3, 10. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of, devil, of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not, our, not his brother. The spirit of Antichrist has maturated. We know that it's maturated to the point that the seal in predestination as operational within the image of the beast's environment is being made manifest today in our world by the, by the fact that the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist today and it is... It is soliciting the worship of death in the body of its its manifest body of unrighteousness. In Romans chapter 7, Paul states this, puts it this way. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh of the law of sin. And with the image of the beast, we know that every facet of 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 godly wisdom that is depicted as the jewels of God, as, as every judgment of God that they're cognizant of, they've stolen from men made righteous by God. So we know that as Paul appears in Romans chapter 7, verse 21 through 25, and declares that, that he may, that we know he had a thorn in the flesh, and he, had, this thorn in the flesh was tormenting him, and he, 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 was we know it was a demon sent by by the devil to torment him and when he asked God to remove it from him God God stated no that my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness and he knew, he knew that Paul would be cognizant that this demon was tormenting him and he would actually he would he would press in even that much more to magnify the glory of God as this this demon was harassing him so As Paul appears here and declaring that he's having a problem, that 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 he's being tormented spiritually, he's actually though he's actually he's actually declaring um, God's sovereignty and and grace that is above it. In the last verse, he says, "I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord." So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. And he, decla he declares that he is still free. He's still free to choose to serve God or no. He's still free. He still, he still has, he's, he, he understands all mysteries and he's magnifying the glory of God and, and greatly within his environment, but he recognizes here. And this is another thing we've been talking about. We've been talking about democratic liberties, different liberties, democratic process and constitutional protections. Here's Paul himself wrote 14 books of the New Testament and declaring that he's still free to choose to serve God or no. And he also declared that he himself, if he chose not to serve God, would be declared a castaway. So, which is the casting away of the bad vessels, which we know that appears in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 through 50, that Jesus explicates for us. So, 
but the image to the beast does not recognize. He says here, Paul says in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? We know the image of the beast has no such declaration within its heart. It's in, it's in love. The Bible, it's in love with death. It's having an intimate union and an intimate time with death as it labors, thinking that it's, it's going to escape the judgment of God to subjugate all flesh with the manifestation of its presence within its environments to satiate and to cultivate the harvest of death and sexual and monetary control over our world. So in, in our democracy and our, our, this United States union. So we know that, that the ministry of Satan via the image of the beast has appeared within our time. And this is the manifestation of the seal of Satan in predestination that is being, being poured out upon the citizens of this United States today as Satan attempts to incorporate the worship of death into the United States Constitution. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. So the Ten Commandments define God's holiness. They are the boundaries of his characters. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy, just, and good was in that which is good made death unto me. God forbid sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of in all manner of conversation. For it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is a call for all flesh to the reu to the reunion of the children of God. That appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and for to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Here we have those with the seal of God that are arrayed in direct, that are in direct opposition to those that have the mark of the beast and the final consummation of the seal of God being made manifest upon the saints and their reunion union with Holy Father God via the appearing of Jesus Christ or the imminent appearing of Jesus Christ in our world. It's, an, it's the, and we, when we couple this with Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10, we get even more information about what is appearing in, in Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 and 8, where the saints have the seal of God and they are no longer subject to death and pain and cognizance of sin within this world, and they are now the full manifestation of the glorious liberty of the children of God. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. Oops, I'm in the wrong. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So we here's the same woman. This is we look back uh, to Isaiah 61:10. And we, and we have more information by the prophet Isaiah of what's taking place here in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. We get a clearer picture of that this woman has also been evaluated. We understand Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 to be the evaluation of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell as they are rated in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. And they're evaluated as they're evaluated by God, their proximity to Antichrist gets closer and closer. To the excuse me, to the appearing of Antichrist gets closer and closer to his 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 spiritual. We know the image of the beast is the closest proximity spiritually to the appearing of Antichrist. Thus, the names of blasphemy appear within the interior of the image of the beast and the. The false apostate Christianity, the woman that is yet in her sins at the second advent of Jesus Christ, as these souls have been evaluated by the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, John chapter 12, verse 47 and 48. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world. If any man, if any, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So we have the the evaluation 
of those uh, and, and that, that have the mark of the beast that appear in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, in their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist as manifested by their works. And the false apostate Christianity that appears in, 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 as the harlot in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, is uh, uh, first we have the appearing, we have the golden cup, which we understand to be the kingdom of Antichrist. God, the Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken over wine, therefore the nations are mad. So we have, and then we have the woman who is arrayed in gold and precious stone and pearls, and these are the souls that have been evaluated by God to be in physical closest proximity to the appearing of Antichrist within their environment as they are they are operational with the ministry of Satan and they have made a union with the church of Satan that I, actually, I personally believe is the civil power that appears as the image of the beast and the names of blasphemy within the beast. But we also understand the beast to be this, the, the Antichrist as it is directly named so in Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 600, three score and six. So as we look at Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, we have a, a more full, this is the very same woman that appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. But we have more information as we have the husbandman that is decked with ornaments, excuse me, the bridegroom decked with ornaments, which I, I, it appears to me to be the manifestation and the appearing of Jesus Christ at the second advent and the bride that has adorned herself with their jewels. And this bride is this very same bride that appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. So we, we look back to the Old Testament and we get a little bit more information. Just as with Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, the passage being verses 23 through 31, we get more information about what's taking place with false and false apostate Christianity and the appearing of the harlot by Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, which gives us a lot more terrible information about what's taking place. And we've been discussing this in previous lessons. So, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10 is a, an, another par parallel. It's a direct reference. It's the same woman that appears with those that appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8, that is a depiction of those with the seal of God that are sealed for eternity. They reside in the flesh. They used to, well, they used to anyway. They lived through the final moments of earth's history. They were sealed with the seal of God. And they were manifestly born into and sealed into eternity by the manifest appearing of Jesus Christ and the seal of God that resided upon them. And thus they are not, they are not consumed by the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming because they have the seal of God. Those with the mark of the beast we know cannot stand in the presence of God. It's impossible. They're, they're consumed by their sins. And that's what this is stating here. They're actually, we know during the seven last plagues, they're all cursing God because of the pain that's coming upon them. And this is the, this is the lie that Satan sold to them. Satan is constantly going out and soliciting captivity to people that will labor within his lie. And that's the thing. It's nothing but a lie. Everything that, that the children of Satan in the image of the beast is laboring as he labors and he promises sexual and or monetary advancement and protection from his blasphemy, his fornications, and his murders as he desires to capture all people on pain of death. It's nothing but satanic captivity. We know that protection is a lie. It's nothing more than assimilation. People are better off uh, staying away from the beast. Don't ever if you're talking to the image of the beast about organized crime, you are being assimilated within Babylonian captivity. You are being assimilated with the mark of the beast, and you're in big time trouble. Anybody that talks to him is going into captivity in that measure without a serious manifestation of God turning your life around and manifesting himself to you. You better be, you better, if you're talking to the, to the image of the beast about the, 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 about 
his satanic ministry, which is manifestly declared as organized crime in civil jurisdictions of the United States of America, you're in big time trouble spiritually. And you have no idea what's taking the Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. This is the declaration by God of vertical detachment from the glory of God and people that are captivated in satanic power and are 100% not cognizant that they have the mark of the beast. So the, this diminishing of cognizance of the law is the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. As men become more and more captivated and their blood is polluted more and more by the ministry of the image to the beast, the mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist, the beast, they become less and less cognizant, cognizant of God's presence, goodness and presence in their, in their lives and in their environment, and they become less and less capable to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify the glory of God as God lets them go. God is trying to, God is in the business of one thing and one thing only. That's, that is cultivating the fruits of righteousness within those that want to labor for close proximity to him, magnifying his glory in the earth, and redeeming a people unto himself with the seal of God. He's not in business for anything else. Okay? And any other declaration by any other prophet, you know, that's just... You're going off on a fool's errand because God's not in business. He's not calling the football game and he's not he doesn't call football games and he doesn't make wagers on on boxing night, okay? This is this is not God's business. 100%. This book is a book written for people only and it's only written for people that are destined to have the seal of God. That's all that's the only pathway that's here. And that's the only pathology that exists. The, the pathology of God's word is only for people that are destined to have the seal of God. It's not for people that have that have the mark of the beast. Because God knows that there's a bunch of stolen jewels as manifesting it and they, the death warrant of Antichrist in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1 through 10, there's a bunch of stolen jewels in there that thought they were doing the right thing but got but they 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 bought counterfeit goods and they were captivated and evaluated by Satan and they took their seats in Satan's kingdom right the only way the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death let me say this again the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death okay it's not your friend it's not your friend and it has no it has no it has no desire for you to magnify the glory that it believes it's right it is rightfully his and you have no place in this world as manifestly declared in the in his environment and in his own glory right the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death right and in ancient times if you went before the king and you know the and, and in ancient times it's apparent that you're not even supposed to look at the king if you're if you're allowed. We know that it's a death it could be a death decree for you to appear before a king without being first summoned. Okay? And if you go into the king's chamber and you look at him or you or you magnify your own glory and he becomes afraid, you can leave that chamber with your head in your hand. Okay? And it's the same way in the kingdom of Satan. There's only one glory, and Satan's not going to put up with anybody stealing his glory. Anybody that thinks that their glory emanates more so than Satan in his kingdom while they're walking in union with the spirit of Antichrist, you're going to find out in a big way. Your glory, ain't, you ain't nothing. You're going to find that out. And when you do, it's going to be too late. Because you're going to walk out of his environment with your head in your hand. <laughs> Trust me. And, you know, it, we, we just getting started now. This It's just getting started. The, the ministry, they just starting. The, the ministry of Satan is just starting to cultivate and steal its harvest. It's just begun. 
<laughs> it's just begun. Okay. So anybody, you've been warned. There ain't no, there ain't no protection. <laughs> there ain't, and God's going to make that clear. He's going to make that clear to everybody that thinks you can have, you can have, you can go to church service and pass this rattlesnake from each other. He's going to show you what's going to happen because every single person that passes the rattlesnake is going to get bit and they're going to be hauling everybody out in body bags. Trust me. There ain't, you can't, you can't make a covenant with death. There's no such thing in this world. You're on a fool's errand. So, so this diminishing of cognizance of the law is the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. This, this is what the, the prophet Ezekiel, exactly what the prophet of Ezekiel is declaring here in chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I, I the Lord, will make the pomp of the strong to cease. You think you have glory in this world? You think you're going to incorporate into, into, into the ministry of the worship of Satan, and you're going to survive this? When, while you're residing in, in, in God's glory and you're cultivating the fruits of, of, the, of life and the glory of this world in God's presence without acknowledging God as the sovereign source and sustainer of all life, do you really think that when, when the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of Babylon, when, when the ministry of Satan comes to the full, you're going to be allowed to emanate any type of glory. You're going to be walking around in sackcloth and ashes. Are you going to be, your head's going to be in your hand. Because, trust me, the image of the beast, ain't, he ain't going for it. He's just getting started. And God's, this is what God is declaring right here. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. These people are 100% spiritually dead. And they have no desire to see you fly around in your jet airplane thinking you all thinking you the golden the golden calf okay when when you you ain't gonna take any glory from from antichrist and <laughs> god's and this is what god's declaring right here i will also make the pump of the strong to cease and their holy places shall be defiled this is within and without false apostate christianity okay Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and the counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will, I will, I, God, will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts, Will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord? They're going to know God's. They're going to know externally that He's coming to punish him at after the mark of the beast comes to the full when it's too late, and they're all they're all they're all running to hide from the presence of God, just as Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. So this diminishing of cognizance of the law is the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. Two Thessalonians chapter two verse three and four. Ezekiel chapter. 7 verse 24 through 27. Man no longer cognizance of God's goodness and presence. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. I had this marked. I don't know why this isn't marked anymore. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, this is man no longer cognizant, excuse me, the diminishing of cognizance of the law is the, man of manif is the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. Man no longer cognizant of God's goodness and presence. Satan's golden cup of abominations and filthiness and fornications. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 15 and 16 declares it this way. For thus hath for thus saith the Lord of the Lord God of Israel unto me take the wine cup of this fury at mine hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it and they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Cognizance, we know that cognizance of sin brings cognizance of guilt, and cognizance of guilt works death in the life of man. But the, the ministry of the image of the beast claims 
by its presence horizontally that it is not accountable to God for sin, and thus it declares amongst flesh immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin, and this is the full manifestation of its residence, of the residence of death and its operational capacity, the worship of death and the constitution of man and its operational capacity that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, and God declares in Revelation chapter 18, verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. After he first says, come out of her, my people, he's, he's, asked, he's declaring that he, it, they're, they're his people that are vertically receiving of love, disseminating this horizontally, are still in Babylon, and they will come out when he, when the, at the time appointed, they will come out and be removed from the, 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 the manifest appearing of the, the, the ministry and the, the anointing with the spirit of Antichrist in full as the mark of the beast appears in our world. So, but, Men, the ministry of the, the image of the beast we know declares horizontal immunity. It's declaring its detachment vertically from the presence of God, and it's declaring itself immune for iniquity, transgression, and sin, and the right to cultivate satanically um, sexual and monetary control of all flesh on pain of death in its presence. So cognizance of sin brings cognizance of guilt, and cognizance of guilt works death within Man, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death. So, as the image of the beast is no longer cognizant, God withdraws, and the light of life is no longer shining within the soul of the image of the beast. It's a dead soul residing in suspended animation. It declares itself immune for iniquity, transgression, and sin, which is actually a declaration to immortality without the glory of God residing in, it, in its soul as it was deadened in its cognizance by its willful administration of the worship of death with it, as the seal of Satan became operational within its soul and manifested within its in its environment by its works. The spirit of Antichrist diminishes cognizance of God's presence. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The food of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meets temperance, good, such as no law. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3, where the saints of God appears as trees of righteousness and... That so the spirit of Antichrist diminishes cognizance of God's presence, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, and that of man's cognizance of his guilt. And thus the fullness of the cup of abominations fills to overflow. That appears in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, where the word of God says, Therefore is judgment far from us, from us neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light but behold obscurity for dark, for brightness but we walk in darkness we grope for the wall like the blind we grow and we grope as if we had no eyes we stumble at noonday as in the night we are in desolate places as dead men so repeatedly here in Isaiah 59 9 and 10 those that have the mark of the beast are declaring the total evacuation of the spirit of grace and the mark of the beast in fullness as residing within its soul. Two thousand, excuse me, two Corinthians chapter four, verse three and four. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And verse six and seven, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen, earthen vessels, but that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So here we have God declaring the light dispelling darkness within the heart of man. But in Isaiah and in, in two, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 and 6 and 7 but in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 9 and 10 we have the darkness overtaking people and then they are de in fact declaring and cognizant that they have the mark of the beast within this 
this, this passage here in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. They are declaring with, that we've discussed in a previous lesson here recently where it says we grope for the wall like the blind. This is actually the manifestation of these people no longer cognizant of the glory of God um, and even a passive manifestation of the fruits of righteousness abiding within their souls as it appears in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 with the fruit of the spirit and this is declared they're declaring here that they're not cognizant of 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 judgment or justice because they're they're now dead souls they're dead souls and they don't even have a passive manifestation of the fruits of life and the glory of God emanating within their lives. They're declaring the total evacuation of the spirit of grace, which parallels Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 and 12, where we know that 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 um, God has totally evacuated their, their, their souls and their habitations are now condemned in the presence of God. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. So, this, when it says here in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, we grope for the wall like the blind. What they're, they're actually, they're trying to, to, and, and they say, we're, we're at, we're, we walk in darkness and in the noonday. We're not cognizant. We cannot, we cannot feel, uh, the manifestation of the fruits of righteousness and the glory of God within our souls anymore. It's very sad because this manifestation of them groping for the wall is declared again here. We know that this is actually the glory of God that has departed from them, but it's also, it's a twofold manifestation of God's power. And this, uh, this manifestation appears in a twofold here. And, and, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 9 through 12, verse 14 and 18 through 21. And there came one, there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, and this appears to be the same angel that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and he shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and, they, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 14, And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Verse 18 through 21, And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first found, the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalca, chalc, chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardonyx, the sixth the sardis, the seventh the chrysolite, the eighth a beryl, the ninth the topaz, the tenth the, the chrys, chryso process, the eleventh adjacent, the twelfth and amethyst and amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So here we have we have the declaration of the glory of God as it's manifested in the seal of God. We have this is another parallel to it specifically states to Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 and 8 and Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 through 10 and it actually gives us more information because it specifically states here in verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing the evaluation again. We're seeing God, the light, evaluating what is in the light. We know uh, that darkness has no power to evaluate what is in the light. Only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, in him was life, and that life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. English Standard Version, and the, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness has never overpowered it. So we know darkness cannot evaluate what is in the light. Only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. And here we have, in, the very, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, we have 
John declaring that this is the bride. This is the bride that appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. And it's, he's giving us, he's expounding on the evaluation, the final evaluation of those that receive the seal of God and that are received into the holy city at the second advent of Jesus Christ after they ascend to meet Jesus Christ in the air. And so we, we know that in Isaiah 59, 9, and 10, where when the prophet Isaiah declares um, the, the mark of the beast upon these people, they're totally, it's, I mean, several times in this passage in Isaiah, they, they, they're stating here, the people with the mark of the beast are stating, they're groaning, they're, they're, judgment is far from us, they, they're not cognizant of justice, they, wa they wait for light, but they only are cognizant of obscurity for brightness, but they walk in darkness. We stumble, we we stumble at noonday as in the as in the night. Three times they're declaring the glory of God, the light of life is no longer resounding within their souls. They declare they're in desolate places, the abomination of desolation, Galatians chapter 4, verse 27. More are more are the children of the desolate than she which hath an husband, which is another reference to uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And they say, we grope for the wall like the blind. So they're actually, they're no longer cognizant of the glory of God as the Spirit of God has withdrawn from their presence, but they're also, they're no longer cognizant of the presence of those that have the seal of God and are manifestly declared to be the children of God. So this is this is an amazing passage of scripture. This is because we know that those that that make up um, um, those that those that receive the seal of God and that are that are uh, uh, manifestly declared by God to to and and are uh, redeemed by God. Uh, it's apparent that that. These devils are no longer cognizant of, of, in the final moments of earth's history, they're no longer being cognizant of these people's presence in their environment. So this is, this is amazing, and this is very significant. This is, it's horrible for the people that receive the mark of the beast, but this is the best news that we could possibly. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, and everybody that makes a covenant with it drinks of that cup. And the people that love God and want to reside in love, they escape. The Bible, this is making this absolutely crystal clear that those that have the seal of God are going to escape. There's going to be a, a, a manifestation of people that receive the seal of God, praise God, and we're redeemed. And we're no longer, we're no longer subject to devils and their environment and their captivity and their labors and their works to be like Satan. And that's the manifestation of the end of our world, is the appearing of the ministry of the image to the beast to, to perpetuate lies and and as it as it attempts to cloak death in the tabernacle of God, concealing its works, making manifest the 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 seal of Satan within its in its environment and causing the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh to captivate everyone as a child of Satan and remove them from eternity and from God's presence. So it's this is this is fantastic news for for the people that want to retain love. It's a labor. It's a labor and you have to put you have to labor for proximity and cognizance of God's goodness and presence in your life. And we know we do this. We obey. We 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 lay down our lives and we cultivate the fruits of righteousness with the gospel of Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And we thus magnify the glory of God, and we, we pray daily Bible study, prayer, meditation on God's word to escape, to be worthy, to escape the ministry of Satan and captivity within his administrator and his church that is destined for nothing but more and more pain and misery and torment as men, men, as it as it disseminates um, lies cloaked, and it disseminates the worship of death 
cloaked in a fraudulent cloak of righteousness as it, it labors to captivate, to captivate people and force people into labors for it to manifestly declare the full manifestation of the appearing of Antichrist within our world. So finally, guys, I just want to say that 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 protection is is by the manifest ministry of the spirit of Antichrist is nothing but a lie. We have good God declaring this in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8 through 11. Remember this and shew yourselves men. Bring it again, bring it again to mind, O you transgressor, transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God. And there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling on a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Okay, so there's no, there's no... Protection is nothing more than assimilation, and it's you're just you're just abiding in a lie, and you're serving death with more and more until the image of the beast can captivate you within its presence, and you, it's it's not going to be good. Revelation twenty two seventeen and Revelation chapter three verse twenty. We know Revelation chapter three verse twenty depicts democracy, democratic process, and the presence of God in the Constitution of the United States today. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. God, only in the presence of God are men allowed to choose him to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify his glory without penalty all the days of their life. Only in the presence of God is this is this allowed. And this is act, this is actually taken one step further and, and being explicated in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And the spirit of the bride say, Come, and let the, him that, that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. So just as Paul, Paul in Romans chapter 7, verse 21 through 25, was declaring, he's still... I thank God through Jesus Christ the Lord. So then, so then with the mind, I myself serve the, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He recognized in this Romans chapter 7, verse 25, he was still free to choose. After he, you know, his great ministry, traveling all over the world, telling people about Jesus and writing several, at least chapters in the New Testament, he's declaring here he's still free to choose. He's still a free moral agent. And, but he despises the appearance of evil as Satan was tormenting him with his thorn in the flesh. And so only in the presence of God are men allowed to choose to serve him without penalty or no. Captivity by the image of the beast ultimately will be on pain of death and men will be forced as the time has passed for them and God is no longer present for men to choose to serve him willfully and they are captivated they're captivated by the manifest presence of the ministry and the corporeal body of the church of satan in the final moments of earth's history here's here it is depicted by apparently by moses in genesis chapter 6 verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And this looks to me to be one of the first declarations of the mark of the beast uh, and the total evacuation of the Spirit of Grace coming upon all those that choose to serve and to be anointed to worship death as the ministry of death for the last days is made manifest by the beast and his image, and it is being poured out, and it is laboring to make manifest the seal of Satan in the final moments of earth's history to captivate all flesh with the mark of the beast and resign them to that condemnation and to the same fate of Satan and his, his evil angels that is we understand to be the lake of fire. The lake of fire is made for Satan and his angels. It's not made for 
for flesh. It's made for Satan and his angels. The scriptures are absolutely crystal clear on this. But men are going to be captivated by believing a lie, becoming operational up upon this lie in various degrees within, within their environment until the image of the beast, captivity by the image of the beast is made manifest in full. And then we know when this, we, we, we see the full manifestation of the, of the ministry of the image of the beast. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, where those that, that did not cultivate the fruits of righteousness and did not walk in love, declare they're no longer cognizant of the glory of God or of those that have the seal of God as it resides on them in our world today. Jeffrey Lee Owen, if you were edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.